Today's picture by Sigurd Kurda is exalted. It's based on Psalm 57, Psalm, so the first temple hymn book. And the reading goes like this. Psalm 57 for the director of music to the tune of Do Not Destroy, of David, a miktam, when he had fled from Saul into the cave. Have mercy on me, O oh God, have mercy on me, for in you I take refuge. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. I cry out to God of Most High, to God who vindicates me. He sends from heaven and saves me, rebuking those who hotly pursue me. God sends forth his love and his faithfulness. I'm in the midst of lions and forced to dwell among ravenous beasts, men whose teeth are spears and arrows, whose tongues are sharp swords. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. They spread a net for my feet. I was bowed down in distress. They dug a pit in my path, but they've fallen into it themselves. My heart, O God, is steadfast. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and make music. Awake, my soul. Awake, harp and lyre. I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will sing for you among the peoples. For great is your love, reaching to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. The introduction to that psalm told us that it's to be sung to the tune, Do Not Destroy. Well, we've no idea what that is. It's a miktam by David. Well, we've no idea what a miktam is or what the word means. But it does say it concerns the time that David fled from Saul into a cave. When David was a teenager, he was anointed as king to replace the disobedient King Saul. And David slew the giant Goliath and was thrust into national fame. But Saul was jealous of David, and David spent most of his twenties dodging Saul's repeated attempts on his life. In 1 Samuel chapter 22, verse 1 onwards, we read that David left Gath, and he escaped to the cave of Adullam. And perhaps that's the cave he's in. It says, when his brothers and his father's household heard about it, they went down to him there. All those who were in distress or in debt or discontented gathered around him, and he became their commander. About 400 men were with him. He's in his cave. He must have been frightened. For if Saul and his army found him, they'd just seal the entrance to the cave. And David and all his followers would be subject to a slow and painful death. Now look at the painting more specifically. There's a man who we assume is David sat on a rock. Or is it a mountain top? There's a literal net. And I think that represents all the problems and situations that we face. And definitely what David faced. In the middle of the picture he's playing a lute-like instrument representing the harp and lyre in the psalm. And at the top, the majority of the painting, is lots of bright oranges and yellows, a sky. We'll start from the bottom and we'll work up. David is in his cave. He prays to God, have mercy. He describes his situation. Lord, I'm in the midst of lions. And then he comes to this verse, verse 6. They spread a net for my feet. I was bowed down in distress. And the painting literally shows David with his feet in a net. I suspect that represents all the difficulties in our lives. Now, I'm not going to make any presumptions about what's your particular situation. But all of us live through times when our feet are in nets and we're bowed down in distress. 
Now, sometimes Christianity is not honest about this, but life comes with problems. While life lasts, we're never going to be done with crying out for mercy. Whether it be famine, pestilence or war, whether it be foes without or fears within, whether it be at sea or on land, whether it be in sickness or in health, in life or in death, we're not exempt from our feet being tangled up in nets. I believe that God's absolutely present with us in our nets. He doesn't leave us or forsake us. But the message of this psalm seems to be a moving from the net into what's above. It moves up. Which brings me to the next feature. The man plays a lute. And it's an illustration of verse 8. David suddenly seems to wake up from his situation. He says, I'll sing and make music. Awake, my soul. Awake, harp and lyre. I will awaken the dawn. David had many talents, but he had a real talent for music. And we know he soothed Saul's madness by playing the harp. And you can almost hear in the psalm this transition from his feet in the net to the heavenly places. Instead of praying about the net and complaining about his lot, he takes up his lyre and harp and he starts a new day. He wakes afresh. Speaking for myself, if I was holed up in a cave hiding from a madman and his army, and if God had promised me something that didn't seem to be coming true, the last thing I'd be doing was writing praise songs. Yet here is David singing in the cave, and he's not singing the blues. He's exalting God. In the midst of all his problems, David suddenly realised that God is bigger than the problems that he is facing. And sometimes it takes intense trials to get us to look to the Lord and discover how trustworthy he is. And we can hear the song of David as he cries out, I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will sing of you among the peoples. For great is your love, it reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. David wants the nations to hear his praise. In his difficulties, he sings about how good God is and his two great attributes. His love is great. It reaches to the heavens. That's what God like. He cares. He nurtures with a never-ending love. As Christians, we believe that God proved his love on the cross when Christ hung and bled and died. It's God saying to the world, I love you. The cross points up to the heavens, down to the ground, out to the east and the west. There's no place where that love doesn't touch. Great is your love reaching to the heavens. Secondly, it points to God's faithfulness. God never fails his children. The last meditation, we looked at Abraham and God's promise to build a great nation. The people of Israel were terrible at following God built altars to other gods that forgot about him, that the worst, the sacrificed their children to gods. Over and over again they failed, and yet God, in his faithfulness, keeps going. Great is your faithfulness. He never loses hope in us. His faithfulness reaches to the skies. It's really important that you focus your praise on God's loyal love and faithfulness in any time of trial, because that's precisely the qualities that Satan tempts you to doubt at times of need. You'll be tempted to think, if God loves me, why is this happening to me? If God is faithful, why are my feet in nets? Remember, David's voice, singing from the cave. God, your loving kindness is great to the heavens, and your faithfulness 
to the crowd to the clouds and his worship finishes be exalted be exalted O God above the heavens let your glory be over all the earth it means the word glory in kabod in hebrew means to give weight heaviness worthiness and applied to god it's saying god you're worthy of all honor of all praise to you we ascribe greatness we exalt you for who you are and all you have been and may that glory be over all the earth and have a look at the picture because although his feet are trapped in nets the situation hasn't changed but if you look at the bottom of the picture he's moved from a cave to a mountain top and all the colors merge as we merge into God and God into us and God who is all in all who is heavy with glory simply takes over <laughs>